in our next half hour, families of the hostages are feeling a mix of emotions today from relief to anxiety. And national correspondent John Moan will join me. He has been speaking with family members of some of the hostages. He'll share their reaction to today's news. We'll have that coming up 3.30 Eastern here on Scripps News. But to move forward now uh, on, on what has been, uh, as we break down this incredibly difficult journey and what will be moving forward for those who have been freed, I want to bring in Dr. Nina Serfolio, a board-certified psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, uh, the author of a new book, Psychoanalytic and Spiritual Perspectives on Terrorism, Desire for Destruction. Uh, that is coming out next month. Doctor, thanks for taking the time to be with me as we've watched this story play out over the last several hours. Um, at this point, as these hostages arrive back in Israel, how does treatment even begin to help them? So I think initially this is such a huge ordeal and trauma that initially they're not going to be able to process or really understand their feelings. Initially they might be numb or in shock or depersonalized or numb or in denial. So initially, really, I think it's about securing their safety, evaluating them medically um, and psychologically to see if they have any symptoms of depression, anxiety, or even psychosis, which is, which is possible, yeah. and then treating that. Well, I was I, explore that a little bit for us because they have been in captivity. We don't know at this point exactly what their living conditions were for the last roughly seven weeks. I mean, for someone who has been a hostage, what are some of the, the mental challenges they will face as they come back to uh, a place like Israel where they'll have the resources to be able to recover? So this is going to be a huge transition for them, for them to go into back to their lives. This is a trauma that they'll really deal with the rest of their lives. They might feel a sense of helplessness and hopelessness. They might be withdrawn from family members um, and just engaging in normal activities because it's it's such a radical change in their environment from where they were that they might have a very hard time functioning. And also for the ones that have had family members uh, killed, they might also have survivor guilt when they learn of that news. And I know there were reports that we saw that Israeli soldiers over the last couple of days, they were instructed uh, leading up to this uh, release, especially when it came to how they would communicate with the children who were released, uh, not to answer questions if they were to ask where their parents were. Um, why is it important for those who, especially as we, we see children now being released, uh, part of this, that uh, there are those instructions given out and how important is it that they follow those instructions as, as especially the young children come back uh, to Israel? Yeah, I think it's so important to respect those instructions and give these hostages space, just even to begin to realize that they're released, that they're free, that they're safe. It might take, you know, days, weeks, even months for them, or maybe not even longer than that for them to feel safe, that they're secure, that they get the medical care that they need. And, and eventually when they feel safe, and again, this is a very individual thing as some people are more resilient than other people and deal better with trauma, but based on that individual person, when they're doing the best that they, they are and most optimally psychologically, I think it's important then probably for family members to break that news to them when they're comfort it the most when they're when they feel safe the most so it's just too much information for them to process and, initially and, and you think too i mean i've i've thought about this today where we have followed the story of this war for the last seven weeks and and it's unclear many of these hostages if they understand what is actually played out uh in the outside world as they've been then held hostage how what is the process of even bringing them in to help them understand the situation that the world's in today? So again, I think it has to be very gradual and on an individual basis. If a hostage is like severely depressed or severely anxious, you might want to really delay giving them a lot of information in terms of where the world is at with this war. 
which is horrendous casualties and deaths and people being uh, maimed. And so I think that it's an individual, it's an individual thing, but you have to really respect where that hostage is at psychologically and meet him in terms of when it's best to break that news to them and really give them the space to begin to assimilate that they're free, to begin to assimilate what happened to them. Because with this type of trauma, it's, it's very common for people to dissociate. And dissociation is denial or depersonalization, and it's on a spectrum, but it's, this is a severe trauma that most likely they'll have to deal with the rest of their lives. I mean, for little children like the four-year-old girl, who lost her parents. This is a trauma that she'll take years and years to process and understand and hopefully get a lot of therapy for because it's 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 a huge um, journey and ordeal of, that they've undergone and it's it's a journey of healing for maybe the rest of their lives depending on their level of resiliency. Yeah, it's it's impossible to, to understand if and when uh, any of the hostages yes. being released, whether they can truly recover from what they've been through. Dr. Nina Serfolio, uh, psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, we really appreciate your time, appreciate your insight you. uh, on this topic.